As the developments in Tamil Nadu refuse to leave any other airtime for any other news stories, we have no option but to go to our correspondent Akshita Nand Gopal, who's standing by in Chennai. Akshita, it's over to you. Akshita, am I audible to you? Right, thanks Jugal. A very good morning to all our viewers joining us on this broadcast. We're coming to you live from Chennai's Greenways Road. Right behind me is uh, Chief Minister O. Panish Selvam's residence, the caretaker Chief Minister right now. Of course, you can see there's a lot of police activity here, a lot of barricades put in place, so we can't go beyond this point. His home is just a few meters away from where I'm standing. But this hectic political activity here in Tamil Nadu, the last many days, we've seen some unbelievable twists and turns taking place in Chennai as O. Panish Selvam has emerged as the dark horse refusing to sit back. He's decided to take Sashikala Natarajan head on. Today, a key development is expected. Governor Vidya Sagar Rao will be landing in Chennai today at noon and clearly the ball is in his court. He will be deciding exactly who the next Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu is. Now, he's expected to land at about 3 or 3.30 in the afternoon and uh, Sashikala Natarajan along with several AI, ADMK, MLAs and MPs will be meeting him today. She will be proving of course that she has the numbers to form the next government. She has the numbers to become the next chief minister. But it remains to be seen exactly what O. Parir Selvam has up his sleeve as well. Yesterday he said that he has 50 MLAs on his side whereas Sashikala Natarajan has nearly 130 MLAs, all of them believe it or not, who have been put up at different locations almost in hiding so that they cannot be contacted by O. Panir Selvam or any of his loyal aides. So it's an interesting battle that we're witnessing here. It all comes down to the next few hours when Governor Vidya Sagar Rao will decide exactly what is the fate of both Sashikala Natarajan as well as the O. Panir Selvam. He's maintained a very, very stoic uh, silence until now on this issue. He's been in Mumbai refusing to talk about this issue. But today, he will be coming down to Chennai to tackle these issues head on. It's a flouting of the constitution. It's a flouting of the, uh, of the oath he has taken. It is most disgraceful that a man should go and hide in uh, Bombay uh, when he has got the con uh, concurrent charge of uh, Tamil Nadu. He should be sitting in Tamil Nadu. What is the difficulty in sitting in Tamil Nadu? In the governor's thing, he's got enough protection. Nobody is going to harm him. So this this whole act shows a, uh, a an attitude which is very very uh, degrading for a position of the governorship. Such kind of behavior from the governor and the manipulations from Delhi will not be accepted to the Tamil pride. We caution them that these activities have been tried earlier and have miserably failed. Let the government be warned that such attempts from the back door, from the corridors of power, will miserably fail in Tamil Nadu. <laughs> இதுக்கெல்லாம் நான் வந்து பதில் சொல்லி என்னுடைய நேரத்தை என்னுடைய தரத்தை நான் குறைத்துக்கொள்ள விரும்பவில்லை நான் என்னைக்கும் ஆதரவு தெரிவிச்சிருக்கேன் பன்னீர்செல்வம் தலைமையில் இருக்கக்கூடிய அரசு அதுவும் சில கொள்கை அடிப்படையில் நாட்டு மக்களுடைய பிரச்சனையின் அடிப்படையில் சில as I said earlier, there is instability. So now it is uh, very clear. We have a clear picture of instability arising in Tamil Nadu politics. We have to wait and see what happens. Right now we can see that uh, uh, there is confusion and uh, there is a lot of chaos. We'll have to wait and, uh, uh, you know, see how it goes. Let's go across to Myrish, who's joining us live from Mumbai with the latest updates on the story. 
Mayuresh, the man who will decide on who the next Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu is, Governor Vidya Sagar Rao is expected to come to Chennai today. Uh, what details do we have really on when he's expected to land here? Uh, certainly, Akshata, only the message which uh, yesterday we received from the Sagar Rao's office is that he will be reaching Chennai uh, afternoon only. But his schedule has not been shared by his office uh, till now. But as we all know that it's a totally number game that uh, everything, uh, all eyes are on Vidya Sagar Rao. But once he reached there, now it would be interesting to see that whom he calls to stake claim. Because both the parties are claiming or both the concerned uh, people are claiming that they have uh, numbers with them. So it would be interesting to see that whom he calls first uh, to stake the claim. Yes. Right, uh, Mayuresh, do stay on with us, you know, to give our viewers a quick brief on all the developments that took place yesterday. Yes, it's all about the numbers, about who will be the next Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu. Sashikala Natarajan has said that she has nearly 130 MLAs on her side. Paneer Selvam has assured that nearly 50 MLAs have pledged their support to him. The governor will be coming in today and he will really decide exactly who can become the next Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu. But there's been quite a delay that we've been witnessing as far as the governor's actions are concerned. Many have questioned over the fact that he sat in Mumbai refusing to come down to Chennai for the last many days despite these developments taking place since Sunday and now of course uh, we saw of course Paneer Selvam also revolting and yet he remained in Mumbai. A lot of sharp political reactions came in even as the governor continued to consult constitutional as well as legal experts. Here's a detailed report along with the reactions on the governor's supposed inaction. Color and family forced me to quit. We have unanimously elected our Chinnamma. Unprecedented constitutional crisis in Tamil Nadu. Paneer Selvam's midnight meditation at Jaya's memorial shattered Sasikala's peace, who was otherwise all set to take the charge of the state from him. Stung by Paneer Selvam's revolt, MLA's loyal to Sasikala made a beeline for Poe's garden. Fearing defection, Camp Sasikala packed their MLA's in buses and sent them to a hotel. With the crisis in Tamil Nadu deepening on Wednesday, the spotlight is now on the governor. However, the role and conduct of Governor Vidya Sagar Rao is being questioned as he remains tight-lipped about the political storm in Tamil Nadu. This, this whole act shows a, uh, a, an attitude which is very, very uh, degrading for a position of the governorship. When confronted by India today, Vidya Sagar Rao ducked the query with a smile. It looks like that the governor Vidya Sagar Rao had chosen an option to consult the legal experts and the constitutional expert because of the situation which has arised in Tamil Nadu especially after open rebellion of O Paneer Selvam. So let's quickly take a look at the options for Governor Vidya Sagar Rao. Five options at this stage. Option number one, wait for the Supreme Court verdict in the disproportionate assets case in Sasikala's case and then take a call. This appears to be a likely scenario. Option number two is allow O Paneer Selvam, the caretaker chief minister, to withdraw his resignation and then take a floor test. This appears unlikely at this stage. Option number three is swear in Sasikala as Chief Minister immediately. She is the leader of the AIA DMK Legislature Party. She claims to have the support of 130 plus MLAs. She has the numbers in her favor, but this also appears less likely at this stage. Option number four is impose President's rule and put the State Assembly in suspended animation. But this appears unlikely at this stage. And option number five, which also is not very likely, is invite the DMK to form the party. But even at this point of time, that does not look very likely. The governor, to my mind, has, done the, has not done anything constitutionally wrong. So how do numbers stack up in the 235-member Tamil Nadu State Assembly? 
the AIA DMK has 135 members, including the speaker. Of course, they have 136, but J. J. Lalita passed away, so they have 135. The halfway mark is at 118. So at this point of time, Sasi Kala, she's claiming that she has the support of over 130 MLAs. She's well beyond the halfway mark. The DMK has 89, the Congress has 8, and the Indian Union Muslim League has 1 and 1 others. So as far as numbers are stacked up in within the AIA DMK, Sasi Kala has the numbers. Paneer Selvam is claiming he has the support of 50 plus MLAs. But then it depends if the governor orders a flow test. As Tamil Nadu witnesses huge political crisis, all eyes are now on the governor who holds the key to resolution of the deadlock in the state. Bureau Report, India Today. All right, yeah. so that was really a report on the constitutional crisis that we're witnessing and also about how the numbers are stacked up right now. But yesterday we saw huge dramatic political developments with both Sashikala Natarajan and Opani Salam squaring off like never before. One who has seen Jalalita to thick and thin and helped her overcome over time some of the biggest crises that we face. Another who's been Jalalita's go-to man, her trusted aid. Every time she found herself in a spot of bother, she'd go to him and he would selflessly, uh, loyally, of course, be there for her and take over the helm of affairs. So we're seeing these two people, Sashikala Natarajan and O Paneer Selvam, in a bitter war of words. Over the last 24 hours, Sashikala Natarajan has accused O Paneer Selvam of not just betrayal, but also of being politically funded and backed by the DMK. O Paneer Selvam, on his part, has said that Sashikala is power hungry and that he will stop her from being the next Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu. Here's a detailed report on what the two have been saying over the last 24 hours. In the near future, this could be Sasikala Natarajan's bus to victory. Almost 130 out of 134 MLAs packed off in this bus to an undisclosed location to avoid any poaching by Paneer Selvam. Because this fight is down to the wire. Whoever has the majority of MLAs by their side will become Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu. Paneer Selvam's over 30-minute meditation may have changed Tamil Nadu politics. But Sasikala Natarajan has made it clear. She is more than just Jaya's shadow. She accuses Paneer Selvam of betraying the party's trust and sleeping with the enemy, the DMK. OPS, as he's called, is now using each and every weapon in his arsenal to prove that he was the chosen one by Jaya, even ordering a probe in her death. The most damaging charge leveled by OPS is that Shashikala and her supporters surrounded him and forced him to resign. This claim could become the basis for withdrawal of his resignation. Kalaga 
அப்பொழுதுதான் சின்னம்மா அவர்கள் முதலமைச்சராக வருவதற்கு அனைவரும் சேர்ந்து ஏற்பாடு செய்ய வேண்டும் என்று சொன்னார்கள் நம் எதிரிகளுக்கு விரும்பாதது இங்கு நடக்கிறது அதனால் தான் இந்த சலசலப்பு இதற்கெல்லாம் அனைத்து இந்திய அண்ணா திராவிட முன்னேற்ற கழகமும் அஞ்சாது நானும் அஞ்ச மாட்டேன் History is repeating itself in Tamil Nadu. Almost 30 years ago, M.G. Ramachandran's wife, Janki, and his trusted aide, Jayalalitha, clashed with each other to become chief ministers. And now that Jaya is no more, her two most trusted lieutenants are battling it out to sit on the throne. With Shivarur, Akshita Nand Gopal, Pramod Madhav, Rohini Swami and Revati Rajivan. Bureau Report, India Today. So the latest move by Chief Minister O. Panir Selvam has no doubt irked Sashikala as well as all the other MPs who are on her side. Panir Selvam, in the capacity of the treasurer of the AIADMK, has sent off two letters to the bank, the Bank of India in particular, which is where the AIADMK holds its accounts. He says that nobody but him can withdraw money from the official account of the party to use its funds. Now he is saying that in his capacity as the treasurer, nobody else can use it and he's requested the bank not to allow anyone to withdraw money without his written consent. Now there's one small hitch. Remember, O. Panir Selvam has been expelled from the party, but he claims that Sashikala Natarajan's elevation as a general secretary of the AI ATMK is null and void and hence her decision doesn't hold good. The question is, what will be Sashikala's next move? Because remember, if the party accounts are frozen, you might as well have no control over the party, especially at a time when she's looking to fly off all the AI ATMK MLAs that she has on her side to the national capital. What will be Sashikala Natarajan's counter is the question now. So it's a big, big day here in Chennai. As I told you earlier, over the last many days, we've witnessed unbelievable political action, unbelievable twists and turns. And today, the governor will be landing here. And I can assure you that India Today's team of reporters will get you all the latest from here in Chennai as far as the political and constitutional crisis is concerned. For now, it's back to Jigal Purohit in the studio. Thank you, Akshita Nand Gopal.